네, 유성균, 병호군. 봐야 되나? 그리고 한 마리아 추가 들어와야 되고. 네. 네. Uh, let's wait uh, a couple of minutes more. Oh, okay. uh, for Maria to hello, Professor. Okay, uh, okay, hi. Okay, so uh, let's start. Um... <laughs> Can you all hear me well? Okay, that's good. Okay, let's start. Okay, so I would start with Rhino. Uh, okay, so um, so last week. Uh, we made a laser cutter model. Uh, I hope you still remember this file. And then I'm highly sure that uh, it was relatively easy. However, okay, it was relatively easy. However, let's imagine that um, if you want to, okay, so today we are going to use Grasshopper. And one reason is that in laser cutting and any other uh, 3D model and digital fabrication wise, uh, there may be many occasions that you need to change some parameters, such as in this case, in this week, as we are talking about the thickness of uh, this laser cut sheet material. Let's imagine that we all designed our model based on the fact that we are going to use two millimeter, two millimeter laser uh, acrylic sheet. But imagine that, uh, you know, as, as, just, as you expect that uh, in this kind of uh, Russian uh, kind of case, imagine that more material will be uh, sometimes very difficult to get. And you realize that, oh, there is no two millimeter laser cutter laser uh there is no two millimeter acrylic sheet and that we only have three millimeter three millimeter laser cut is the only material you can get then actually you have to redesign everything and this case this one is a rather uh simple cases so you can actually change your file in an hour or two but imagine that you have a very complicated or sophisticated uh design then it will be very uh cumbersome so what I'm going to do is we will change the material uh, thickness and then we are going to use grasshopper so we can do it, uh, we can automatically or we can rapidly change the thickness of this design. So let's just say that uh, in this file, 이거 보면, uh, 여러분들, so we have uh, this hole here and then we have little notch here. So uh, we designed this notch uh, based on the fact that annotation uh, a little bit lower to see. Okay, so let's say that the thickness of this notch, little notch, is two millimeter, and then also we are we have. the opening has two millimeter, but we have to change that uh, this one, if the thickness of material is, will, if, if it is changing. So what I'm doing, uh, we are going to use Grasshopper to manipulate these files. Uh, before doing this, I just a little bit range more nicely that I move all the drawings on a all positive side, meaning that positive in terms of x and also positive in terms of y. 
uh, so a little bit further. So we can we can move it very safely. The problem of the previous case is that some area was in the negative area, meaning that if you multiply something or divide some, when you use some multiplication or uh, divide or something, then actually the negative value will change the uh, symbol and the value. So some unexpected occasions will happen. So I want to make everything sure. So that's why I'm locating all my documents on both X and Y positive area. Okay, then here, and then the final goal that what I'm, then let's kind of start from here. So first thing, so let's imagine that how can it change this sickness automatically? So what I do, uh, we can actually uh, use probably, um, I, I, let's do some conventional way first. How to design shapes? What are the sequences of geometries, point, curves, surface, and volume? So let's say that let's start from uh, some point. So I draw point, some uh, points here. So I kind of draw four corner points here. And then what we are going to do is uh, we are going to shift these points is up and down. Your point we are at and then the opening will be changed accordingly. So what I'm going to do is uh, probably I just uh, find a geometry to save these points. So we may need at least four points. So I copy and paste uh, four points here. Okay. Then I just set uh, one geometry per, I start with from the uh, top point because this will move up and down together. And then another point to this and another point of this and another point uh, this one. I have to tell you that this is just simply one of many possible um, alternatives. So there are many other ways to, for you to do that. This will, but this one is the easiest and most, I think this one is the most intuitive way of manipulating geometry. So that's why I'm doing from point, curves, surface and volume. Okay, so then I can move up and down these two points. So as we remember, probably I can use, I can, I may need to move these two points. And when I connect them, I use shift button. And then to move on Y direction only, I'm going to use a unit Y. And then probably we may want to change from two millimeter to three millimeter. So to do that, we probably only move 0 0.5 millimeter on one side. So the others may move it. So this one is zero. And then if I move 0 0.5, then this will make half of the movement. And then probably we can uh, simply co copy and paste this unit. Uh, simply I copy move only. And then in this case, I may need to move the other two points. And then I may use a negative component. So reverse the direction like this. So by doing so, we can actually change the thickness very quickly. And this one is actually based on the scenario that we may want to change two millimeter thickness material to three millimeter thickness material. And then based on these two, we can actually create a new curve using polyline. Now this one, polyline. And then we need to combine uh, these two points 
then probably these two points. And then as you see that I only simply connected these two and these two, this mid the right side curve is automatically generated. And if I add Boolean toggle, and then make it yes, true. And if I connect it that, then you probably see that the, the other curve is also generated to make a closed polyline. So we actually create a, the first hole to extend the width of it. And then let's a little bit clean up to make them look nice. So I just kind of move them here and then connect here and move this one here. I'm sorry, Professor. I just wanted to clarify. So this is for, so this one is for like, if there's a particular area you want to change, but what if like, you know how we have the extrude, the extrude um, way that basically changes the, um, that changes the size of it. Oh yeah, that one we can do it too. Uh, oh, but okay. can you say one more time, which one do you want to change? Um, let's say like the, you know how we, um, when we were making the, the, the blocks last time, we made like the thickness 30, the extrusion 30. What if you wanted to, is it, can you also apply the same, this same way as well for like the, 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 the thickness of it? Uh, you, you mean in terms of 3D? Yes, Professor. Oh, yes, of course. Uh, actually, the one I'm doing is extremely um, basic thing. So you can apply uh, okay. the same rule to do the same thing. Okay, then okay. Yes. Okay, so uh, this one is just simply, so far, what I did was, simply, I just make the first hole parametrically changing hole. So today I just, uh, Maria, I just explain about just basic skill set to parameterize some design component in your design. Okay, we can. Right. And then I just kind of slowly move one at a time. Yeah, okay, sorry. so this is the first one. This one is basically, so then I just kind of add one more geometry. So this is the output of the first hole. So now this one is now this one is becoming larger and larger. So I just simply select these. And then as you remember, I make it a cluster. So this one make it abstract and looks simpler than before. So this cluster is a simply the first one simply generate. Uh, probably I just called it four or slit is more appropriate. So this one simply create a, a, a slit here. And then what I'm going to do, I'm just going, I'm going to, I want to mirror this one to the another side of this PCB board. So to do that, I may want to use mirror function. And then you can connect this mirror. And then if you see this one, you probably see that, uh, mirrored plane is located here on the left side of it. So this one is mirrored based on the Y axis. And the reason why this one is mirrored based on Y axis is that, do you see another input parameter which is called plane? And then if I extract this parameter, this plane is actually on the uh, y axis, y, y and Z axis based plane. That's why it is metered in this way. So what we have to do is we have to reset a plane that is supposed to be somewhere on this midline of the PCB board. So I'm kind of showing you how to do that. So instead of using this deport plane, uh, I'm going to use plane uh, there are another many ways of defining plane and probably I may use this one called plane with three points. And then there are three points are required and then point A, B, C, and we need to know what they are. So I kind of like check the help command. If I check the help command, 
point A is the origin point of a plane, and point B is the x direction point, and C is the orientation point. So what I mean is, so kind of let's kind of make one like this, but I kind of like try to rename point A is the origin point and point B supposed to be uh, X direction point. And actually point C simply means that it's supposed to be a G direction uh, point. So to draw that, we need a little help. So let, let's say that we are going to create a plane somewhere here. So we have basically, uh, let's kind of draw a line at the midpoint of this line. And then I draw some line to X direction. And then also I draw some vertical direction. So I want to use uh, this three line as a reference of this origin and X and G direction point. So for origin, I kind of, I use extract parameter and I use all of extracted parameter for all these three. And then for the origin, I set one point here in the middle, but actually you need a point here. So I actually create a point in the middle and then X direction point, set one point. So when you set a point, it does not allow you to select a point. You can simply create one here. And then G direction point, uh, actually, um, so origin point. Okay, so you have to do it after you create a point. So after you create a point, so select this point and done. And X direction point, I set one point and select it. And for the G direction, I first create a point on this at the end of line. And then I'm go to G direction point and I click set one point and click this one. So now you see that this plane was generated here. And then if you connect this one instead of the original one, you see that The another green is actually the mirrored one. So the original curve, which is here, is mirrored to the other side. Is this okay for you guys? 이거 좀 이해되나요? 한글로 좀 설명을 해주자면, 그 우리 요 지오메트리는 그 우리 처음 했던 것처럼 포인트를 이동시켜서 왔다 갔다 해주는 거고, 이 미러 이 미러 펑션은 플레인이 있을 때이 기준 이 기준 플레인을 기준으로 그 미러로 이제 복사를 시켜주죠. 그래서 그걸 하려면 플레인을 만들어줘야 되는데 플레인을 만들기 위해서는 포인트 세 개가 필요하고 첫 번째가 오리진 하나는 X 하나는 G인데 그거를 정확하게 찍어주기 위해서 라인을 하나 라인을 두개 그렸고 라인에 점을 찍은 다음에 하나씩 선택을 해줬어요. 어... Is there um, any professor, difficulty or question? Um, sorry, Professor. Um, could you maybe go over the generate a slit part really quickly, just to? Uh, okay. So this is slit. Mm -hmm. uh, the way how I generate it. Actually, we have to go inside of this cluster because I wrapped around it because I finished one. Okay. So I kind of going back to the inside of it. Okay. Let's uh, look at the inside of it. So I, I'm trying to type in generate the slit. I can't find any. Um, oh, like... this one is what I made. There is no such ah. a thing. This one is a, my own function that okay. I wrap around the whole previous version into this. Okay, for, or for the thing that you've drawn on the screen. Yes. So okay. the way how I do the cluster is a, like a function that when you have a very many components inside and you want to clean them out then you wrap around it and then you can make a, your own cluster okay like what we did last week then basically yes, yes. Okay. all right then i just finish save and close so this one is actually my function which is i generate i made it 
right? So now meter is created and this meter is actually meter whatever slit that has this side. So if I change the size of the original one, this one is also changing. Okay. okay. So now second part is this one. So now just like this slit. Oh, okay, then let's do have one more thing, which is we need another four slit for the cover top case. So we actually copy this one to this. The, uh, we, we want to copy the slit of the bottom case into the cover case. So to do that, we, on, we can actually simply, we can use move and then we, to move, or some geometry, we need a reference vector. In this case, we can draw a line from the left lower corner point of the cover case's left lower corner point and shift and then enter to terminate it. And this line become the vector for our move component, such as if you create a move component here, we can connect the geometry here. And then in this case, we are going to move uh, these two and actually, uh, yeah, so move has this one. And then we also connect this geometry, which is the, the first slit. And then this move, we are only move on the unit X. So I've searched for unit X here. And I connect it to unit vector to the motion. Oh, actually not this one, sorry for that. So for this motion, I extract a parameter and then you have a motion component here. And then I'm going to set it, send one vector but as you see that vector always start from a zero, zero, zero point because it is a vector. And then we need a reference point here and then we want to use this curve that I drew before. So to use this line to define a vector, I just move this curve from its original location to zero, zero, zero. So now we can use this one as our vector. So now I'm going back to Grasshopper and set one vector and, and you, I use this line as my vector. So as you see that, if you see this move one, you see these another two slit, which was copied from this previous one. So I don't need this red one anymore. So we have two slits on the top case too. And as you expect, if I change the thickness, this one is also correspondingly following the size of it. Okay. And then now let's say that we need to update uh, this side panel depending on the new thickness, which is three millimeter. So to do that, I'm going back to, so this one is a little bit independent from our previous one. So I also save geometries and I called this geometry as uh, slit. And then I just kind of connect this one. So this one is our, uh, this is the two slit on the cover, okay, I just call it this one as slit for cover. And actually I do two more. This one I call, I find geometry and I call this one as slit for a button case. And actually this one is actually these two. So mirrored one and also this top one. So now if you see 
these two. So slits for this one is actually this one. I may misconnect it. Ah, one is missing. And then I have to connect these two on here. So these slits, which is these two on the bottom case, and this slits for cover is another two that is located on the top cover case. Okay, so these are done. Uh, and then now go back to the side panel. And then again, I don't need to see this middle group anymore. So I use another cluster. Then this one is extremely simplified again. And then I called this one as simply generate four slits. So this one is actually the cluster that I did so far, but this one is being abstracted. So now I'm going to probably repeat the similar process. So first of all, this one, in this case, it I kind of first, I selected this one and then to generate those corner points, intersect. Okay, it doesn't. So I, uh, I simply using point function, I just, I just click all these corner points of our side panel. And enter to finish it. So now I'm going to use these points to generate parametrically changing side panel design. So now here, we need so far one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. There are a lot. So I let's kind of group them one by one. So I just kind of like I use a geometry. But I'm sorry, I, sir. yes. I just want to ask a quick question. So, um, so you said you're you you've selected the points that you're going to use like for the for the changing yeah, the dimensions for, for these sure. points. Yeah. Um, but if 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 you're only ideally um, doing the points for like and you know that like the 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 square points like the four yeah. points of the high the high risen ones, uh -huh. um, why do you select all of it? Why can't you just select the the four the eight? Uh, which eight? Um, the so if you move your mouse a little bit more left, the, yeah, uh, those ones, yeah. Uh, because so the process is that. So kind of think about the overall process. We mm -hmm. manipulate the position of points first. Okay. And then using those updated points, we need to create a polyline. Oh, okay. Because the polyline okay, is our target object. Okay, you got then, it? Yes. Yes. And yes. then to manipulate the shapes of polyline, we need to control point. Okay, okay all right. Exactly. Okay, so. I, but I kind of uh, make four chunks of points. The first group, probably the left four. And the second group is these two together because they move at the same time together. And I can group them, these four points as one group. And I can use these another two as another group. So I only need uh, four geometries. But again, this is not really um, fixed science. So, so Maria, too, if you think you have a better idea, just follow your, develop your own algorithm and try okay. that. So uh, in, in many cases, sometimes it will work, sometimes it would not, but it doesn't matter that, you know, writing an algorithm is a repeated process of successful and failed algorithm development. So you just kind of, we'll just go many iteration like that. So here, let's say that uh, this first one, I just, okay, so I reset it. So first set, I'm using set multiple geometries and select these one, two, three, and four, and enter to terminate it. And I call this one uh, left, four points. 
And then for the second one, I also use set multiple geometries and click these two and enter. And then I call this one, I said top two points. And then this one, I use a set multiple geometry and one, two, and three and four and enter to terminate it. And I call this one as right or point. And then the last one geometry, uh, I also use the set multiple one, but be careful about the sequence, the order of selecting point. I, I'm carefully selecting this point on clockwise direction because that's how a curve is generated, curve will be generated. And then I call this one as a bottom two points. Okay, so now after doing this, we need to make this top two point and bottom two points move upside or downside. So we are going to again use move command, move component. And then these two points will move by using this component. Using this one's supposed to move uh, top direction. So I'll use unit Y and connect it. And to the factor, we can actually recycle uh, this factor. So as you see now, these two points will follow using this slide number. But, okay, so now you say, if I move 0 0.5, it will just move 0 0.5. So if this will move 0 0.5. Do you think, is it okay? So the reason why we move 0 0.5 is that the two millimeter thickness will change to three millimeter because this half, the, the half of 0 0.5 will be moved on the top side in a slit and another 0 0.5 millimeter move to the downward in this slit. But, but in this case, this one's supposed to move one millimeter up and down. So actually we cannot really use the number as is we need to multiply this number by actually two. In this case, if number two is clear, you can actually, instead of using this slide bar, you can actually extract parameter and then you can set a number here. And then I just type two and commit and make sure that the data type, data item is two. Uh, actually, this we don't know that this one is whether text or number. So actually let's kind of uh, do not use this one yet. Instead, what you can do is you see here, this one is Boolean, this one is integer, this one is number. So I would rather use integer. And then I connect integer here and I set the value of integer as two below. And then if you connect this one here, and then if you connect this one here, then when you change the slider zero to 0 0.5, as you see that this unit X will move uh, the double number of it, twice of it. So it will move like this way. So this one looks okay. And then we are going to copy this one for the bottom two. And then I connect this bottom two points to here to replace the top two point. And then we are going to use negative to move the direction to the opposite side of it. So now here, as you see, if I change the number here from 0 0.5, and then actually this one is actually moving the double uh, multiplied size of it. 
So now we have this one, top two point and bottom two point, and we are going to connect all these vertices together to create another polyline. So I click here and then find a polyline. So be careful about the sequence here again. So I'm going to connect left four points first. And the second, I connect this moved geometry. And then I connect right four points. And I connect this geometry here. And by doing so, you have a polyline here. But to make sure that this one is closed correctly, I also double click Boolean toggle and then make it true. And I also connected this one here. By doing so, we can have a, a clean closed side panel here. And then uh, let's a little bit clarify the process. So I'm going to move this one on this side. And then this one, clean one here. So is this okay to some of you or anyone too heavy, <laughs> too much? So my suggestion, uh, I am recording uh, this lecture. So after this class, spend some time and then follow my instruction and repeat this process. But if I kind of a little bit uh, re-explain again. So we, the, our end product is the polyline, which is the side panel. To create a side panel, we need vertices. So we have left side point, top point, and the right side points and button points, they are all connected. And we need Boolean true toggle to make it closed. And to make the top one and bottom one uh, to move and be wider, I need to use move function and also using unit y, but the distance to move unit y is actually came from the original slide bar. And then I actually make another geometry and then I save them here. So this is the final output of this creating side panel so far. So, and then we don't need this one to see from now on. So I also use cluster and make it a very simple component. And then I bring them here. And then I called this cluster as my uh, generate a side panel. Okay, and then, so now we have this, but we need two side panels and that one probably can be located on this direction. So what I can, what I can do is uh, move, I can also use the same thing, move. And for the motion, I extract a parameter and this motion, I can recycle this line that I drawed from here to here. So I select motion and set one vector and I use the original line here. So now you see that this one is generated by the first one and the first one's side panel, the thickness will be coming from here. Now this one will change automatically. Uh, this one is so far, and then so this is the, uh, the second side panel. And then I also use geometry one more time. And then I collect the copied version and the original version. So this variable can contain uh, these two uh, side panel together. And I can even make this one even simpler. So I use it cluster and then I bring it here and also here. And then that's now this one as my uh, generate 
two side panels component. Okay. So this one is kind of generated two panels. Uh, this one is for bottom slit, and this one is actually side slit. And then how, uh, we actually have, actually now, this one is a learning process. And actually, I just realized that we have a problem. <laughs> what is a problem? So now this one can easily change the whole design very nicely because this one uh, changes the width of slit. And also this one changes the length of side panel. But still, we have a problem, so we need to update to that. And actually, in many cases, like this one, design actually have uh, their. So design is actually a called design process is called actually learning process because we can know some side effects of one changes to others only after we conduct those changes. So when you design something. The, um, the better, the best way to approach your design is not really uh, doing, considering every parameters at once and doing at once. Finish as quickly as possible. That will help you to find some hidden parameters and then you can fix them. So again, design is this really iterative process. And this one is identical to this kind of software design or software development process. So let's go in, let's kind of, uh, today is a little bit about theoretical part today I'm introducing. Okay, so let's see this one first. So imagine that some of you are very good at developing computer programming or software. And you probably think that, uh, and I kind of believe many of you will fail <laughs> in developing a good working program. And that one, you are not the uh, lonely people. So uh, I, I believe that you guys, okay, so the assignment is this far. Uh, let's just, okay, let's go a little bit further. Okay, I, I will do something, one minor thing. And let's do, and I, I introduced the theoretical part. So it's your assignment. I will upload this code to the Google Drive. So your job is you are going to design your own. Okay, so Maria too, or laser cutting, we only need polyline, that's it. So that's why uh, we only need this line only. Uh, if you have more parametric three-dimensional design, come to me and then let's, I will help you to solve that. But these are all the basic principles. Uh, if you go, if you actually, if you are using, instead of Grasshopper, if you are using, you may want to, you, you can actually automate your design process even using Python. So you can actually develop it using computer programming, but basically they are all the same process. So here the problem is the, the thicker the material will be, the problem is actually, so we don't need this one at all. So while the, uh, while the design or design of slits are become bigger and bigger, the kind of the material left over here will become a problem because if we see very thin material over here, but laser cutting will melt some portion on both sides of it. So it, it may not survive. So another thing we have to change is we have to actually enlarge the case, the bottom and top case themselves become larger. So that one, what we have to do is we can actually scale up, but when we scale something, it's better to use the center point of a geometry. So I want to identify where is the center of uh, this bottom case by drawing two cross lines. And then I use, or, or you can actually simply add a point at the cross line, cross point, and then I just delete it. So this is the center point of 
uh, this bottom case, and I use it as a center point of any scale manipulation of the case. So here I am actually using scale component and to have a geometry, I kind of extract parameter. And for the geometry, I set this original bottom case outline. And then here you see the center point. So I also do extract parameter. And for this center, I set this center point. And now for factor, let's say that this one is somehow parametric, parametrically related to original number slider. So I simply connect this one to here. But actually one, oh, I accidentally connect into wrong place. So let's say that one, but you see the scale is start from oh, actually um, one. So if you don't change any scale, that's one. But if you change something larger, it's supposed to be one point something. So here actually I may need to add some basic number. So I, I simply use, I go to parameter or I just double click integer. And then I set this integer value number one. And then I connect this number one to here. And then somehow I connect this number sliders value to the addition. And then I connect this result to the factor. So now as you see that this is the bottom size and simply one, we are adding one. So actually when it is zero, this one is zero. And then this one is 0 0.5. Now you see that this one is extremely larger. And then now if we go to one, then actually this one is almost a double. So what, so then this, huh? did you say, anyone say something? Yeah, so, I have a question. Yes. Can I ask my question? Uh, I think, uh, let, let's see. Uh, I think I, you should mute. Okay. Okay. Uh, my question is that why you don't add in another slider instead of adding some something like integer? Uh, but actually, professor, you're you are mute and no one can hear you. Okay. So. All right, so that's one of the design variation. So another, I, well, I'm, told you, I'm telling you that the way I design is just simply one way of many. So here, the easiest way to do is, let's say 0 0.05 and connect this one to this scale. Then actually this one independently, I can manipulate it. So that's one way of it. Uh, and then the one I prefer, I don't have, I don't want to have many inputs. I want to have the minimal inputs. So one parameter can change everything. That was my original intention, but it's up to you. But they are actually, um, they aren't independent, I mean. Uh, yeah, that's, a, well, that's actually, uh, your de it depends on your design intention. So if you want to make them independently, you can do that. If you want to make it dependently, you can also do that. So I'm, I'm telling you that many, many different ways are possible. So don't worry. <laughs> so file, yeah, just do whatever you prefer the way. Uh, oh, the reason why I do the previous one is that uh, Parametric design, the assumption of parametric design is that everything is parametric, parametrically linked together. That's the, the kind of one of the principle in parametric design. For example, uh, in general, if you are tall, probably the length of your head will be taller than the short guy. And then probably if you have a large head, you probably have a big eye. <laughs> so our human body, uh, if you are 
if you are a tall guy, there is a high probability that you have a longer finger than short guy. So, I mean, the, I mean, the imagine the any object in the nature, look at the trees. If a tree is taller, probably its roots will be taller. So, but they are just parametrically uh, related. So it's up to you. All right, so this is done. So scale is done. So scale, you can change that. And again, uh, you can also create the second one, which is, which is the, you go back to Okay, so then I just simply again I, I cannot move uh, double click doesn't work. So okay, so I can probably uh, use ah uh, probably can I ah uh, fine I can use fine so I can use move not this one uh, so suddenly i cannot double click oh get it okay i got it so now i have move and then i connect this geometry to move and then probably i also can use extract parameter and then select motion and set one vector and i can use this vector too. So now this one has the second case design and then this one has the first case design. So I can use geometry and save these two geometries together. And then again, I don't need all these uh, other things. So I just cluster them into one piece. And then this one, I just call it as generate two cases. And then this, I, I need this design to design the size of it. But again, this one is actually have a limit because if you see that if, if, I, if this one is larger than 1.1 1 .1 something, they start to overlap. So it means that this one has a limitation, parametric limitation and the quick solution, when you design the locations of it, make it probably make it this one uh, wider than before. Then, however, when you actually change really the little things, then actually you are wasting your material. Uh, but if you really go really deep side of it, uh, using some artificial intelligence, you can actually design their location to minimize the material too. Okay, so that's another thing. But your job is basically similar to this. So you need to design your own bottom case or your own cover design of Arduino. And then this week's assignment is make them parametric. So that's it. And you can even go way, way more complicated job. And so now I only simply parameterize two things. One is the width of slit and the length of side slit, side panel. But you can actually make almost everything here parametric. So enjoy the process. <laughs> Any questions so far? Until now? Is it easy to understand or is it too difficult to understand? Uh, Yu Gun, 어때요? 할만해요? 네, 괜찮습니다. 어 그러면 유성구는 괜찮다. 어 병호는 할만해요? 네, 저도 따라가고 있습니다. 네, 네. 별로 어렵지 않죠. 사실 따지고 보면 별로 어렵다. 사실은 to be honest, they're really easy. <웃음> okay, let's be honest. Any, any, uh, okay, I have, have to tell you that, um, yeah, uh, 솔직히 말해 되게 쉬운 거예요. <웃음> 그렇죠? Okay, I have to be honest. This one is really easy thing. Okay. Uh, I hope you're not to be stressed. Only matter is you're not familiar with the interfaces that using Grasshopper, but... Oh, and then for those who think that, oh, this is too... I am... Okay, any guys who's, who think that I am bored? 
<웃음> 이거 너무 지겨운 사람. <웃음> 아우 나 이거 이거 나 너무 지겨워서 이거 나 시간 낭비하는 것 같아 하는 사람. Everybody? <웃음> no, no, no. I'm, I'm finding it quite interesting, actually, Professor. I also think it's um, quite nice because what you're okay. teaching us here, I'm trying to, because I'm still, I'm still doing my, um, I've done my blog, but I'm also quite, I was quite interested from my email, like how to um, basically change it. And you've basically done it with this. And I'll do this assignment, but I'm also going to try and apply what I've learned here onto the blocks as well, just to kind of see how they go, how it works. So, it's, yeah, it's quite interesting, yeah. I may not cover that much. However, I just kind of quickly introduce that the same thing, but using a program. So let's say you can use Python script. You can go to tools and Python script, and you can open actually edit. Okay, so here is actually this one. So if you are good at computer programming, and then if you think Grasshopper is too, is you're not tolerate the kind of the tedious process of using this line connecting or visual program. You can, so now I just close it. You can actually jump into Python directly. I mean, some of you probably the use of computer programming language is much uh, more intuitive for you. Okay, so now I will start Python programming quickly. So all those components, you, do you remember move? or mirror, copy, all those things are actually inside the, this Rhino script library. So or you have been, not or, but many of them is actually, many of them you used uh, so-called function component in Grasshopper is actually in this library. So you need to use this library and you know that to use a library, you need to import it. So import Rhino script syntax, and then I just, uh, redefine right if e, I redefine the name as RS because Rhino script syntax is too long. So I save the long name into RS. That's it. And then uh, so here uh, we actually do you still remember that to select a geometry, uh, what you can do is called RS get object is a function that you can collect some geometries from the Rhino document. If you want to use multiple geometries, you have to use get objects plotter form. And then this one is actually, you need to use it to collect object. And then as you guys, you think you need to save those geometry in form of variables. So I called it PTS, a uh, one PT when I save as a single get object, and then I use GT PTS in form of plotter name to collect many of them. And then here, as you probably know, I just using uh, print PT or print PTS. And then to run this one, you just simply click this green button or as you know, F5. So click it, select object, singular form. So this one is you only select one point and that's it. And then now it asks you again, select objects, plotter form. Then actually you can select vertical object and enter. And then if you see below, you probably see something strange that this one is that, remember that the first one, 39C098BE is the identification number of each geometry. So actually I select, I remember that I select, uh, okay, so if I click this one, and then if you see the property window here, and then if you click details of it, it said 39C09. So basically this PT, a variable is saved the identification number of each geometry. And this is how you save and manipulate and reuse any geometry inside Rhino. So now you can do that, all right? So this is how you collect. So what we did, so first of all, we want to move this one up and down. And then actually uh, one of the bad side of Rhino is that there's no slide bar in Python. You have to type the number so-called hard coding so let's say, I'm just simply quickly repeat what I have done. 
using Grasshopper. Now I'm using Rhino to do that. So what I did was, so I would say PTS one, or I would say PTS, uh, I called it probably top PTS, top two point, which is RS get object plotter form and bottom to point is RS get objects and then I'll do that. And what we did, we moved a little bit up and down. So what I did was RS, I do it and then I call uh, this too long. So T2P is the short term of the previous one and RS. In this case, then I would say move object. And then I have to use plotter form. And then when you use Python, if you have any question, how do I use this kind of function? You can check the reference below. If you, are you guys, I believe that you guys know how to use reference. The, and then in Rhino Python, what you have to do is type something. Is, let's say that you want to move. So now we know that RS dot, and then I kind of need to find something move related and you see move object, move object, plotter, move plane. So you are using plotter, so move objects are the kind of natural selection of it, and then enter, and then you hit left opening parenthesis, then actually reference will open here. Alternatively, you can do, you can go to help, and then open help topics, and then let's say that you may want to find something. So you just type here, move and enter. Oh, you don't need to type enter. If you hit move, then you also see move object, move object and move plane. So now I'm moving multiple thing. So I click move object. Then actually you see that move object, its form is move object and object IDs comma translation. And then, it explains move object function moves one or more object. And parameter here might mean by is input parameter. So input parameter, you need two things. The first is object IDs plotter. And actually this one is a list. And then translation is basically a vector, which is a list of three numbers or vector 3D. I will explain this one a little bit later. And then, Returns, returns means output parameter. It will return a list of GUID. And then what the GUID is identifiers of the moved object if successful. Meaning that if everything moves correctly, you will have uh, object IDs as an in form of list. Otherwise you will have some error code inside or maybe none is returned. So now, so now you can learn how to use Python. 유성이랑 병원은 컴퓨터 프로그래밍 잘하죠. 네. 얘라고 그죠. <웃음> <웃음> 그래서 지금 제가 so now what I do is this one is actually general way of you know professional programmers do. Normally they want they ident they first search some prebuilt library or prebuilt function first if there is any. If there is none, then I have to write my own function. So I first search function first, if someone already developed it, and then I check their reference to learn how to use them. And then I just simply use it. And then when you use a function, a prebuilt function, the first thing you need to know is what are the required inputs to use that? And what are the outputs of the function? So now you can actually connect input and output. Okay. So now we learned about how to use this move object function. So going back to Rhino again. Okay, so here we learned that we need two inputs. One thing, the first one is IDs, and second is translation, which is the vector. I prefer to use this way. And then IDs, I got decomposed almost everything. So IDs, we can actually use this top two point and paste it. And translation, we need to identify a vector. So this is vector, which is three points. So in X, 
I probably use a zero or you can use a list format, zero comma, and then we, if we need to move 0 0.5 upward. So Y is 0 0.5 and G will become zero. And let's just see what will happen. So if I click this one, and then if I click these two points, uh, I have to, I want to delete this first one. Uh, oh, two points, button two points. Okay, so it's, everything's okay. So I click it, I select the first top two points and enter, and then the two bottom points and enter. Uh, there's a translation is, oh, I probably typo. Translation, Ctrl C, Ctrl V. So okay, I'll just to repeat again. And then select object. So I select these two points and then select the bottom two points. Okay, be, look at pair, uh, just look, take careful. These two, the points will be moved up once I press enter. So this one is located here. If I press enter, you see that this one is moved 0 0.5 up. You got it? So this is how to do that, to kind of do it. So undo it. And then we need to do it for the, uh, the other two points, which is I just copy and paste. And I have to do the same process. And then it, this time, this one's supposed to be the bottom two points and the G is reversed and the same thing. And then this will create this will move the top points upward and bottom points downwards. So now what we are going to do, we are going to create a poorly line. So right, let's find out if there is any poorly line related function. And then, so let's say, uh, I, let's just search and if, find out if there is any uh, poorly line related. Ah, voila. So we, I can find add the polyline. And add polyline requires point. So point input parameters is a list of 3D points. It's just exactly the same thing that the polyline component in Grasshopper requires vertices. In this case, it requires point. And the, again, replace ID none. So as you know, in Python, if something is look like this, this one is optional parameter. But if that says that optional, if set to ID or existing object, the object will be replaced by this polyline. What it means is if you offer some ID, it will replace the ID, exactly. So you don't need to collect the output IDs anymore. And the return, which is output parameter is GUID. But here, something you need to careful is that this one is ID, meaning a single, closed poorly line ID. This is not a list or this is not a floral form. This is singular one poorly line will be generated. And then the output type is not the geometry. It's an ID of the poorly line. Okay. I hope everything is okay. <laughs> All right. So let's, let's have fun. So now what we learned, what we learned so far is that we can use RS dot add polyline go down here and that input we need a kind of pts list and then second one is optional so we can ignore that and the output is polyline id but here is the problem because the the, the thing is that we have a top two points and the bottom two points as two lists so if you simply collect them, the form will be um, nested two points each inside the list. So we have to actually uh, decompose them. So uh, the way how I do is let's say that we are going to use PTS. And then the first line is probably, ah, we have another problem. We are actually using the same number here, IDS. IDS so I change it to IDS1. IDS one, and IDS2, oh, I got it. No, no, not that here. So actually T2P is the point of moved one. So I call this one as T2P1 and this one as T2P2. <laughs> Sorry for this bad naming. <laughs> Please use something better one than this. So here we, are, we need to make a list. So uh, actually list in, in, a, in a single dimension. 
So here, what, here's what we have to do is T2, P1, and the first point, and T2, P1, and the second element, and T2, P2, and first element, and T2, P2, and second element. So this one is a kind of way of making a list. And in Python, you probably know that this one is known as tuple. And then and tuple and list doesn't really matter in Python here that much. So I just use it without parentheses, but this one is also a list. And now we have one, two, three, four points are in this points and this one create a polyline. And then let's just see how does it look like? Okay, so now we create, if you click this one and select object and enter. Oh, and then, again, be careful about the sequence here too. I select from the back to the first one and enter. So now it is actually create one, but it does not close it. How can I solve this problem to close it? There is no true false option here, but how can I close it? You can add yourself. Yes. <laughs> I can simply add the first one at the end of the list. Okay, so now if I, but all game, be careful, the, check about the sequence. I select this one and two and enter and three and four. And this one is enlarged and changed. So now what we have to do is we have to meter this one based on this meter point and we are going to meter on this way. So what I'm going to do is, so let's find, is there any meter related function here? So if I find it, uh, let's kind of find the meter if there is any, oh, now that's great. So meter object, singular form and meter object plotter form. In this case, we have only one. So I just use meter object and meter object. We need object ID because it's a singular. And it said start point and end point. And you may need to use true or false depending on you want to copy or not. And return is also singular form of identifier. And be careful if it is not successful, then you will have none as an, as an output. So now going back to the here. So let's say that. So now we have an ID. So let's say this one is slit. Oh, I would better say this one is slit two, then I would rather say that this one is slit one. So now slit two is rs dot meter object singular form, and you need to add ID, which is slit one. And then start point, let's just say that this one is ST and ED is this one, and then I add it true to save it. And let's think about start point. So start point is something like this and add point is here. So I would say ST, uh, there are many, many different ways. So now actually one of the tedious thing in Rhino is keep selecting this point. I, I really hate it. In that case, one way of doing is, so now let's think about this start point. And this start point, if I check about it, it will give the coordinate of it here. So I just simply copy it. And then here, my start point will be this one instead. So let's just see that if this one is 19 point blah, 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 and 52 point blah, 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 and zero. And then at n comma and ed become, so now say that end point supposed to be, this one needs to be careful. Uh, so, okay, so let's just try. I'm not so sure that whether it will work or not, but this one could be my end point. So here, check there, it's details. And it give me this coordinate number and close it. And ED become this and delete this end parentheses. And here, here is that top two points. I used uh, get object and I, I really don't like it. So let's say that, uh, uh, let's use this one. Like, okay, so just to continue. So, but you can change it using a variable and it, their coordinate you can identify a point coding like this. So we have start and, and true. So let's run it, okay. Uh, to do that, I just undo it to make everything 
in their position. So if I select it, so select this first one, enter, and the last two, enter, then you see that this one is generated. If you don't believe it, you, if I see undo, then you know that this one is generated. So this one is actually a general process of, uh, and then you can actually keep continue similar process, but this one is not really a good way of programming your code. So this one is really a lousy habit. How do you, what is a good way of organizing your code nicely using functions? So instead of doing this, I make a kind of called, so to define a function depth, I would say that, uh, so what I'm doing is I am, uh, general, I just call it, I make a case and then just this. And then now you probably add a lot of pseudo codes here. Now let's just say the first pseudo code is make a slit. Then you uh, or make two slits. Or I just simply say make, uh, or I just say make bottom slit. So now you have here. And then probably you may want to use comment. What is the second one? So maybe you make side panels and then you need to make, uh, make other, or I would say side, panel two, this one is number one, one and two. And then probably you, after this one, you need to uh, make pop splits. So kind of you first make this kind of, the list of functions, this one known as a skeletal code, which shows the overall algorithm of your codes. And then you have to call this one after define a skeletal code to run it. And then this one, you need the first one, make bottom slit. You need to define here. So make bottom slit. Oh, I need to call that. And then, or then, then you bring everything inside this code by using tap. And then you can okay. So slit. Uh, I need the colon. Okay, so everything looks okay. Then you have this left minus icon. You can hide it. So this is very good way of organizing your code in a very clean, nice form just like using clusters that we do. Your, your function doesn't have any return. That's the way I love to. <laughs> okay, the, uh, the one I really hate is I don't want to use any returns. Then how can I use to that? Okay, so uh, I'm highly sure that Yusong이랑 병원은 OOP 들었죠? Object oriented programming. So, 네, 저 수강은 했습니다. 유성이는요? 네, 저 듣긴 했습니다. How about Marriott? Did you take any object oriented programming course? Okay, so these only for those who took object oriented programming. So actually, what is the better way? Okay, so for those who do not use object-oriented, but I prefer using object-oriented programming. So instead of using function, it's better to use class. So let's change them as class. So class, you may simply want to use noun and then bring this one or inside of it. And I would rather call C as case. Done. And then probably you can, there are many other ways I probably that see that make a case would work. But, but in case for skeletal code, instead of making a function, you better change it to init. 
and then you need to add self and then by doing so you actually can delete this first one uh, and then when you do this one you have to bring it every class inside of your class and then here everything looks okay and then i have to add the self and then whatever you need to take a variable to another function you have to set that one as class variable so to do that let's say that you want to use slit2 or something other thing just simply make it that this one as self then you don't need to use any return this is my preferred way of using because i really hate uh, and yeah i really hate to connect every input output input output input output then because i have to update so i really hate that so if you want to really use that i strongly recommend for you to use actually object oriented programming that saves your life a lot so this is just i'm just introducing one way of developing it uh let's just see if it is working so class 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 so class, this all function need to be self. Okay, self, 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 and then uh, and then self, 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 self is okay. It's okay, okay. Let's just try. And then this one is go back to original. If I run it, okay. So select object here, here, enter, and here, and here, enter. Then everything is done. But using very nice and clean. This one is using op. So beautifully done um, so another way of so if you think you're comfortable with computer programming you're so welcome to do that and then but if you are not comfortable about it just use procedural programming or just grasshopper and the beauty of it is not using grasshopper or python separately you can combine them together so now I'm showing you how to do that. So now I just simply copy this part. So something I tested, some code that I tested in Python and I just copy it. And then if you go back to Grasshopper, what you can do is again, I did this, I showed it this one long time ago that if you go to mass, you can use a C sharp, Python script or Visual Basic. Among them, I just use Python script then double click it, you can see the editor. Ah, yes, your import Rhino script is already ready. So all you have to do is paste your code here. And then now here, look, if you see that the 0 0.5 is the one would be that really nice that if you can actually use number slider. So this is a way how to get the worst case. I just, okay, I just delete all the, I just, I just forgot how to do it. So I would do I'm coming back to just or procedural and delete it and so top two points is top two points, top two points, top two points, ideas, ideas, test, nothing, no problem, okay. Oh, yeah, here, now I got it. So now I have a polyline here. Geometry here, geometry. Okay, so everything is okay. So I kind of, I need to really kind of dig into how to connect uh, object-oriented programming. But when it is procedural programming, as you see that everything is done so far. So geometry goes in, geometry is in here. And then the copied one is here. So now we want to connect actually number slider. So now I set this one as slider. And then I just set it as 0 0.5 here and I connect it to slider. And then instead of using here, inside of it, I can use slider. Instead of 0 0.5, I can use slider. And then this one, I can use minus slider. So test it and okay, everything looks good. So if I do that here, whenever I change that, this one is changing. Okay, and then also there is mirrored one, and this is also changing. Okay, so you as graduate student, 
you have three options. One is you can use, if you're co comfortable using computer programming, use computer programming, Python, or if you're comfortable with C Sharp, Vivid, you, you name it. You use whatever you want. And then if you want to use, you can just simply use single, uh, uh, Grasshopper only, or just you can use Python only or the combinations of it. So the beauty of Rhino is you have all kinds of variations that fit your comfort. So that's it for today. And then lastly, what I wanted to show the beginning of it is that, have you heard, guys heard about AI Winter? AI Winter, and I'm many professors in AI, in AI university, AI graduate school, believe that sooner or later, another AI winter will come. So in 70s, 670s, uh, as much as these days, AI was a huge word then. Actually, these time AI is huge word. Everybody wants to learn AI, computer vision, neural network, and actually, that's the uh, like exactly 60, late 60s and early 70s were exactly like this. Everybody loved to learn AI. And suddenly, and I believe it was a Marvin Minsky somehow. Probably Minsky. Yeah, so Marvin Minsky, he, he was a professor and he was the only first description of neural network, yes. Marvin, the genius guy at MIT, who with the same or carpet uh, later, he write a journal article that AI is all fake. The inventor of AI actually write a paper that AI so far we know is all failure. And since then, in the 70s, AI winter arrived. What does that mean by? All the grants from the United States or terminated. And if you write a proposal, blah, 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 technology, blah, blah, technology, and anywhere in your abstract or title, if you have AI in it, it is almost in instantly trashed. For about, I don't know how long, but for a long time. So DARPA's early 1970s funding cut. Nobody fund any AI research then. This is called AI winter. And many people believe that sooner or later, we'll have this uh, second AI winter. What happened? So now, uh, since then, uh, so there are many, many related issues and AI research goes down. It's almost disappeared until when the University of Vancouver computer, the neural network uh, has the deep neural networks invented. Until then, there's severe winter in AI. And then actually, what is the point is that, so, uh, and then actually there, uh, there are many researchers in the United States particularly DARPA and other military-related grant, uh, the organization want to develop a so-called uh, computer, computer programming or software development project. They also researched the full progress of all funded project, I don't know, at the time. So uh, DARPA, Incremental iteration standard. DARPA. Okay, so I just simply incremental iterative and incremental development. So this one is known as DOD STDL 2167 which is Department of Defense military standard, standard number 2167, is that they researched all funded computer programming project and they realized that almost many of them are actually failed project. So what they do is they changed the whole standard. So many, st many kind of developmental 
project standard before DOD 2167 was so-called waterfall process, meaning that if you actually submit any project actual plan, uh, you probably all support this kind of plan, which is called waterfall model. So waterfall model is actually doing what at the time. And then if the first thing is you are going to divide your project into smaller pieces and then you do one at a time. This is known as waterfall model. But if you actually make a plan to develop your project using this model, your project will not be accepted in any DOD or DARPA project. So what is the project plan that you have to submit? is called it incremental and iterative model. So incremental and iterative model explains that your project supposed to be repeatedly developed. So what it means is the project plan you are going to proceed is actually doing again and again and again. But at the time it could be something smaller project and then it could be a little bit larger and larger and larger. So this is kind of like now become almost the standard process of any software development. So when you do develop a software programming, what you have to do, you develop a single, very simplified project and do it again, make it a little bit sophisticated, do it again and make it more sophisticated again. So this is kind of iteration is necessary. So, uh, but uh, it's just kind of a side story. <laughs> okay, so far actually your assignment is, is okay. Again, uh, make your uh, laser cut Rhino model, either Grasshopper or Python or combinations of it or any program language you want. Uh, so that's it for, that's quite uh, pretty much that's it. Any questions so far? 자, 그러면 여러분 혹시 뭐 병호나 유성이 뭐, 뭐 이, 질문 같은 거 있어요? 질문 없습니다. 네, 그러면 오늘 여기까지 하겠습니다. 네. 네, 감사합니다. 네, 수고하셨습니다. 오케이. 네.